Yolando Castile had not. I can break down on a public road with car problems. Corey Jones cannot. I can shop at Walmart. John Crawford cannot. I can have a disabled vehicle. Terrence Kircher cannot. I can read a book in my own car. Clifford Brooke Glover cannot. I can be a 10-year-old walking with my grandfather. Claude Reese cannot. I can decorate for a party. Randy Evans cannot. I can ask a cop a question. Yvonne Smallwood cannot. I can cash a check in peace. I can take out my wallet. Amadeo Diallo cannot. I can run. Walter Scott cannot. I can breathe. Eric Garner cannot. I can live. Freddie Gray cannot. I can ask someone to put their dog on a leash. So this gentleman is actually uh, heckling what's going on here right now, the one with the, with the flag. I can be arrested with a fear of being murdered. George Floyd cannot. White privilege is real. Take them, please do not engage with anybody who's so angry. Take a moment to consider black person's experience today. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Parents, guardians, grandparents, talk to your children. Teach them about racism, anti-racism, and racial equity. Talk to your schools, your churches, your neighborhoods. We can change this world with knowledge and wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. 
Jackson. We are so glad you are here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and really helping us to get this started. So, as part of the planning committee, I am so glad that you're here. Today is a very special day. Um, it's Juneteenth. And if you don't know what Juneteenth is, it is the day that blacks were actually found out that they were emancipated free in Texas. They had, they had been free two years prior, and all of a sudden, in Texas, it took another two years before the word got over there. But Juneteenth then became a celebration of our freedom. And so, this is a really monumental day for us to do this. Um, yeah. So, what does it mean to be free for a black person in America, right? We know that freedom has its challenges, yet for black people, freedom still has yet to be realized in the same way that whites realize it. And that's where racism comes in. So that is why we have come together today to begin to have the conversations to make change that will be life-changing, life-changing for blacks and for other marginalized and oppressed groups in America. And so, Wait a minute, I lost it. And so, we're encouraging you to focus on what you can do to challenge the racist beliefs and acts that continue to oppress those who only seek to live and access the same privileges and freedoms that others enjoy. Vote Trump, not a change. Amen. So, as director of HU Cares at New Mexico Highlands University, HU Cares strongly opposes racism and racist acts, including policies that continue to oppress and serve to reinforce attitudes that black lives are disposable and don't have value. We know just the opposite. Black lives have value. Black lives matter. Black students matter and deserve to be here. The brutal, the brutal and racist acts perpetrated against blacks over the past couple weeks, specifically George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Christian Cooper, are just a snapshot of the ongoing brutality and racist acts that are the result of attitudes that are embedded in the fabric of the country, states, cities, and communities where we live. Because of social media outlets and access to other technology, we can no longer turn a blind eye to the ugly, brutal truth that racism exists and is a deadly disease that has been allowed to fester in the souls of society. No one should ever be sentenced to death and violence because of the color of their skin. The calls and demands for change are rising like a volcano that has been dormant but suddenly begins to erupt. We are seeing citizens of every race, gender, age, ethnicity, and religion come together to demand change. No longer are we willing to be pacified by assurances that incidents will be investigated, no longer will we be will we settle for sentiments and statements that our concerns will be addressed and taken into consideration. We are demanding change. We are demanding change in the form of action. Actions that serve to dismantle institutional and systemic racism that is part of the policies that make it so convenient to hide the injustice and the obstacles to personal growth and academic success. HU Cares will continue to work to support our students, faculty, and staff as advocates, educators, and facilitators of programs to advance violence prevention and anti-racism on all levels in our campus community and in our city. We welcome your partnership in this work. Thank you very much. Yeah. As they disinfect the mic to get ready for our 
our next speaker. I just want to tell everyone we really appreciate you for your concentration skills. Thank you so much. Freedom of speech is an important thing. So, our next speaker is Mayor Louis Trujillo. Bienvenido a la plaza de nuestra gente de Las Vegas. Thank you and welcome to this beautiful park that belongs to you, to everybody in this park. Thank you for everybody showing up tonight. It's so important to be here to show solidarity with all lives. Black lives matter, Hispanic lives matter, Chicano lives matter, everybody's lives matter, white people's lives matter, everybody in this community, every single person, every life matters in this community. <laughs> we have been through so much in this community, and we have a beautiful, beautiful reputation of being a very tolerable and very welcoming community, and that will never stop. America! Woo! God bless America! Everybody needs to know that Las Vegas is created by so many different cultures. We represent, we are one of the most diverse communities in the state because of the United World College, because of New Mexico Highlands University, because of our culture, and that will always continue, and it will always be a welcoming com a community for everybody. I want Las Vegas to be known as a very welcoming community, a very welcoming and a very sharing and a very caring community. We have always been that, and we will not stop for anything. We are looking forward to uh, we are looking forward to creating a community policing program where the community will have input in all the all the decisions made by the police department. We will have an oversight committee, we will have people working as a community policing, and we will have communi the community be, part, be a bigger part of our police department from now on. I won't keep everybody, I just want everybody to know that everybody is welcome. Everybody in this community is welcome. The entire community is so proud of this very moment right now. And thank you so much. Thank you. Just a reminder of physical distancing, and if you need a mask, come see me, and we'll get you a mask. Our next speaker. This is illegal. Dr. Victoria Moro from United World College USA. I want to start by saying thank you to everybody for being here tonight. I am so honored to be here because I represent the United World College. USA, and we represent this country on our campus. America. Yes, America. America. And we love this country. And part of loving a country, just like loving your children, is making sure you're willing to educate them. And when we educate our children, we're taking them from a place of fear to a place of truth and of courage and especially of understanding. 
And the only way that we can do that is if we're willing to face truths, including about a country we love. And one of the truths about our country is that we have not yet realized what we set forth for ourselves in the Declaration. We haven't yet fulfilled the power and potential of our people when we really dedicate ourselves to the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness, not just for some, but for all. So when we say with one voice that Black Lives Matter, hermano, we are not saying that anybody else's life doesn't matter. We're saying that none of us are free. None of us are realizing the promise of America until all of us are doing that. So we're here today as the United World College to join this community as part of it and to say that we're dedicated to the struggle of our black sisters and brothers our brown sisters and brothers, anybody who finds themselves on the other side of the freedom to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. I want to say thank you to the city of Las Vegas, to San Miguel County, for welcoming our students from all over the world and giving them a wonderful experience of this beautiful part of the United States. And I also want to thank you for partnering with us to try to strengthen our community through the efforts of all of us. Because again, until all of us have a chance to contribute, we're all losing out. That's why I'm so happy to be part of the educational opportunity that is United World College. Because we recognize that our children are the future, and it's not just the children in our own backyard, though we've got to pay special attention to them. It's our children all over the world. And they're our future, and they're our hope. And I hope that all of us today take the time to interact with the young people here to remind them that their actions matter, their words matter. And with regard to Black Lives Matter, tu lucha es mi lucha. And that's true for all of us. Thank you for having United World College as part of the community. Thank you for showing up tonight and giving all of us hope for a future where every one of us counts and the color of our skin does not stop us from contributing what we have to offer. Welcome, this is a beautiful day. We got a wind blowing on our back and we have the sunshine on our shoulders. It's wonderful, it's great. And more so the human, the human element that's here today lends for this energy and makes things happen. And we'll hopefully by means of these different presentations, it gives us the energy and gives us the synergy so that we can move forward and move forward together. Uh, I want to start off with a land acknowledgement and recognizing many of you know that we try to start off with many of these kind of recognitions, and that's to recognize the ancestors of Native American peoples that came before us with this landscape. Without them, and recognizing that Hikaria, 
Kiowa, Arapaho, Comanche people, that they were also devastated by many of the elements of racism that, in the name of progress, stifled them, quieted them, but didn't keep them out of existence. I want to read a little bit. This is a diversity statement that we came up with from Highlands University, if you allow me to read. We, the members of New Mexico Highlands President Council for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, share concern regarding the census death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police officers. Within recent history, the death of Breonna Taylor in Louisville, the assassination of 28-year-old jogger Armand Aubrey in Georgia, and the verbal assault of Harvard graduate Christian Cooper in New York will indicate I'll indicate a continu continuity of racist aggression. Like much of the United States citizenry, we are anguished at the incessant continuity of police violence directed at African American communities and toward other diverse populations. Too many communities of color suffer daily significant punitive indignities that are implicated in the over exercise of force by entities charged with the protection of the same communities. We demonstrate our support with these impacted communities and reiterate their calls for justice and for this the progressive deconstruction like. of systemic racism, intolerance, and state sponsored violence. We equally denounce the impunity provided to individuals and offices that are, are not held accountable for these egregious actions directed at communities of color. Black lives matter at all levels of society. The challenge for higher education is not limited to the recognition and remorse of racism, intolerance, and equity. We bear the essential responsibility to rectify these societal ails. Universities embrace the charge of a liberal arts doctrine to utilize education as a tool for democracy and for the courageous problem solving of social issues. New Mexico Highlands University will be a vanguard institution to inform our students, administration, faculty and staff and to collaborate with local institutions and communities to eradicate the potential for state violence and to sponsor the communicative and healing processes that our communities chronically and continually need. The Council for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion emphasizes the responsibility of our university and other institutions of higher education to provide clarification and discussion of the complex factors that foment inequity, racism, and violence. Foremost, we bear the responsibility to recognize the grief and rage that sponsor protests and counter violence actions. We offer service to sponsor forums regarding white privilege, implicit bias, systemic violence, microaggression, anti racism, and other burned discourses. These discussions, these discussions, albeit uncomfortable, are increasingly more urgent and necessary. Safe spaces are paramount for the facilitation of conversations, for grieving, healing, and resolution. We endeavor to create a campus environment that actively confronts injustice and proactively builds inclusive excellence. We invest in ongoing activity that will support a diverse staff, faculty, student body, faculty leadership working for social justice and culture inclusion. We, we call upon the compassion and collegiality of our Las Vegas San Miguel community to advance forward in the reconstruction of community and academic discourses, institutional reforms that reject racism, injustice, and institutional violence. Our opportunity for civic engagement and community service provide us with venue to address racism and bigotry and demonstrate our scholarly integrity and exercise of our institution's guiding values. I, I mentioned this and I share with you, you know, this is what we've shared internally at the university. But for the better part, what it does is it makes a call for action to other different kind of institutions that have a history of inequity and have a history of intolerance. We need to be working together and look at this bigger issue of what is alliance formation and working at, in, individ, at individual institutions of different kinds of levels of responsibility and accountability and come together not only in singular issues such as Blast Night Daughters, but move forward in a progressive stance that we have a united voice to deal with larger issues. It's all related together. Racism is dealing with economic in inequity. The housing issue is related to climate change, climate contamination. So they're all articulated together until we really get to the point that we can communicate, work together, 
share our concerns and, and proactively, strategic plan. That's when we're going to get together and we're going to move as a community. We're going to move together as society, as a nation, and a multicultural society. Gracias mucho and thanks again for being here today. everyone to get one of these flyers. Ooh. On the back is five tasks white people can do right now to support racial equity. Hey, why don't they pick and up one of them is we need to remove this claim from our vocabulary that I'm not racist. So please, Ooh. Ooh. Flyers, Ooh. pass them out to your Ooh. friends. Let's wake this, this world crap. up. Thank you American. so much. It causes trouble. When we ignore, it settles down. Okay? So we want to try and make room for everybody. It's hard, I know. I, know. I want to next uh, introduce um, someone who's going to speak on behalf of the SPOT Youth Team, Makani Nakasone. Makani. I'm sorry, Makani. I'm sorry. She's not up here yet because it's not her turn yet. She knows it's not her turn, so she's trying to be polite. Pat caught a mistake. Our next speaker, I'm really sorry, Bob. Amnesty International's local group 463 has Dr. Bob Pearson here to speak. Yes, Bob. So for those of you who don't know, Amnesty International local group 463 is famous. They're famous statewide and nationally for being so active and so productive for human rights. Thank you, Amnesty 463. Bob Pearson. Thank you, Pat, but I must make clear that I am speaking on my own behalf. I'm not representing Amnesty International in this because I may be saying something which are beyond Amnesty's policy. We are at the intersection of four crises in our country and in our world. When crises occur, very often great changes in society result, either by popular demand or by the dictates of the powerful. So we need to think of what we are going, how we are going to respond to these crises to build a better future. Will we, will we demand it, or will we be passive and let others make the decision for us? Here are the crises. The first one is, is racism, which permeates all aspects of our society. There is no racial equity in education. There is no racial equity in health care. There is no racial equity in law enforcement, and the list goes on. How can we tolerate this after 155 years have passed since the end of slavery? The second crisis is the pandemic that we're now enduring, which has already taken close to 120,000 lives in this country. How is it that the United States, with less than 5% of the world's population, has about 25% of the cases of the coronavirus? The third, the, the third crisis is that of economics. Tens of millions of people have lost their jobs. But the problem goes back further because, because wages have been stagnant for about 40 years while wealth has increased greatly. Why is that? Why is that that the wealth is so unevenly distributed more than at any time in our history? 
the fourth crisis, which we are asked to ignore by some, by too many, is that of climate change. Scientists tell us that we are within a few years of disaster, but yet our federal government does nothing to alleviate the crisis. All of these, all of these crises are interconnected. They build a structure, they are part of the structure of racism and oppression. <laughs> what can we do about it? And all of them affect us negatively, but they affect our black, brown, and indigenous neighbors to a much greater extent. This must be changed. How can we deal with this situation? First of all, we have to understand all the interconnections of these crises and the problems that are faced. And to see them as part of the overall structure of oppression. We must understand this and make it known to other people. We have to build a community and build a vision for a better future. And we have to demand that, that we have radical changes in line with that vision that are based on the principles of justice and social responsibility. We also have a vote coming up in November. And this is probably the most important vote, vote and election of our lives. Even mine, the baby comes here. This is not one that we can afford to sit out because our future depends on it. So think carefully. There is still time, there is still a chance for us to build a better future, free of racism, free of oppression, that works for all of us. to vote. There is a table over here that you can register to vote today. Right here, um, Irene and Dr. Irene X is from the Santa Fe chapter of the League of Women Voters. Please, if you haven't already, sign up to vote. We gotta do this. We gotta do this. The change is gonna happen at that voting booth. So let's go for it. Come over and see Irene and watch the vote. Okay, now we'll the mic and we'll get our next speaker up here. Don't stand in my way. Can everybody hear me? No! No! No, Trump! I am. I was asked to give my youthful perspective today. But who am I to talk about how and why Black Lives Matter? I'm just another privileged millennial. So instead, I'm going to talk to you all about how I'm coping these days. I'm going to be honest with you. I just feel so overwhelmed and hopeless some days. And I know I'm not alone in feeling like this. Every day it seems like things in our country just keep getting unbelievably worse. And yet I feel this immense pressure to enact change and somehow make a difference. But realistically, where can I start? I've been spending time reading both current and historical testimonies on racism 
And I realized that there were several underlying themes that people of color have been trying to tell us. We remain willfully ignorant of their struggles despite all of the evidence. We are not listening to them, and we are not voting for them. And they're right. It's so beyond apparent that they are right. So what steps can we take to fix this? Now let's be honest, it's hard to confront ignorance, especially when the ignorance is our own. But we need to. It's no longer necessary, it's essential. Ignorance breeds fear. And fear is what continues to keep racism alive and well today. So what cures ignorance? Simple. It's education. One down, one down. We have all of the information at our fingertips, as well as the ability to talk with people from all different backgrounds. Let's utilize this. We need to start normalizing, being able to change our mind when we learn something new. Especially now, especially with racism. Changing our mind is uncomfortable. So let's check our ignorance at the door and start having these uncomfortable conversations that have been well overdue. For our first step, I challenge you to start asking questions and having these uncomfortable conversations with our children, with our family, and with our friends. And be honest about it. Now when we start having these uncomfortable conversations, we have to make sure we are listening. Mr. Rogers strongly believed that love begins with listening. He said in times of stress, the best thing we can do for each other is to listen with our ears and our hearts and to be assured that our questions are just as important as our answers. <laughs> Daryl Davis is a powerful group of that. If you don't know who that is, Daryl Davis is a black musician, activist, author, and actor from Chicago. But he is most well known for sitting down and talking with members of the KKK and convincing over 200 of them to give up their robes. How? Just by listening to them. Despite meeting with people whose entire culture revolves around hating him and people like him, Daryl always enters each conversation without judgment and with the intent to listen and learn. If he can sit with an imperial wizard of the KKK and listen to him, we can listen to each other. So the evidence is there. There is power in listening, and it's an easy next step to take. For the final easy step that everybody else has been talking about, the most hope for our future comes with our ability to vote. Our current system is obviously not working for everyone, so let's change it so that way it does. Voting within our small communities is the best way we can ensure that our own voices are being heard, and voting in our national election is the best way we can ensure that the voices of our brothers and sisters that have been silenced for so long are also heard. The next election we can vote in is the general election on the 23rd, so make sure to mark your calendars, and if you have not yet registered to vote, there's a table right here that will help you. But again, who am I to talk about how and why Black Lives Matter? It's okay to feel overwhelmed and hopeless today. Acknowledge it and take a deep breath because you're not alone. But tomorrow, we will wake up and we will start having these uncomfortable conversations. We will start listening to those that have been silenced for too long and we will make sure that we vote. The only way we will move forward is if we do it together. I want to see if uh, Lasinke is still here. Lasinke, are you still here? All right, I don't see him. Oh, good. I want to let people know. Um, Lasinke is going to be um, on our radio show tomorrow, and also he has a petition. We, we, we earlier heard people talking about economic justice. That's one of the focuses of Lasinke's work. He drove all the way here from Las Cruces, so. Please sign his petition if you get a chance. Thank you so much. Woo! Our next speaker is Christopher Holm from the Black Student Union of Highlands. Christopher! Good evening. My name is Christopher Holmes. I'm the president of the Black Student Union. 
I'm a Sioux student at Highlands, and um, the reason I'm talking today is because we're talking about equality, equity, and all those terms, and I think that it starts with um, our education system. And I've been in Highlands for almost two years now, and most of my texts are from a skewed, colonized point of view. And the reason I bring this up here in New Mexico is because I feel like teaching brown people white people's history isn't helping any of us. So I joined the uh, President's Council of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and I'm a committee member on the Social Work Education Committee, and I'm trying to get uncolonized textbooks at Highlands University. And Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Happy Juneteenth. So track Christopher Holmes down later and find out how you can support him in his effort to get those textbooks switched out. Let's work with him on that. Our next speaker is... Chief David Bibb of Las Vegas Police Department. David, where are you? There you are. Let's welcome the Chief. Maybe you have some good news for our local uh, community about our police department. Let's find out. Thank you, Pat. Oh, I can only tell you how humbled I am to be speaking at an event Juneteenth. Um, it truly really is a great story. It's a underreported piece of history. Um, I won't bore you with my resume, but I am a military veteran, and the part of this story that thank I you, identify thank with, thank you, thank you. The part of this story that I identify with is the U.S. troops that went into Galveston and told those slaves, you are slaves no more. and put a few Texans in check. <laughs> At any rate, I've been your chief for the last year and a half and it has truly been a privilege and an honor to lead the men and women who have sworn their lives to defend every one of you here, every person in this community, regardless of race, religion, creed, age, gender, we're all equal. And, thank you. And you're all equal to us. So, I won't drag this out too long, but I will say that if we can do things better as a police department, we welcome the input. closing, I will say, if you ever need us, do not think twice to call us. We will always come for you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Bibb. And, uh, yikes. <laughs> Forgot to consult my list. Sorry. Okay, we've got two speakers left and then a closing uh, ceremony that we're going to do. So let's bring up uh, local attorney Brett Phelps. There he is. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Thank you guys all for, for being here. Thank you, Ruthie, and everyone else who helped put this together. Um, this is incredible to see. So I worked as a public defender, and two weeks ago, public defenders across the country marched in support of Black Lives Matter. And we had people down in San Fe. And I posted about that on my Facebook. I was happy about it. And somebody commented, don't bring that stuff to Las Vegas. And I just want to say that I didn't have to bring that stuff to Las Vegas, because y'all are already here. This is here. Black Lives Matter is here. So what am I doing up here then? 
I just want to remind people, especially white people, shut up and listen. Don't be defensive. These are things that have been ingrained in us subconsciously. We can tell ourselves, I'm not racist. I don't have a racist bone in my body. But we've been raised and lived in a culture that that's what we're taught. It's at a subconscious level. So when people tell you that's racist, that's wrong, don't get defensive, right? Listen. Listen to what the people who are actually experiencing these things are telling you. Keep an open heart. Keep an open mind. Do not be defensive when somebody is trying to teach you something. Right? We have great teachers here in this school, in this city, and in this community. And great staff and other supporters at Highlands. So listen, be patient with each other. Learn more about other cultures. Read black authors. Right? I want to support more, more textbooks, less colonized textbooks. So please, listen to people, keep an open mind, know that most people are coming from a place of love and caring. And remember, black lives matter. Thank you. All right, as we disinfect for our uh, next speaker, um, we are going to do something as part of the closing ritual, so I do want to ask you right now, just be thinking inside your own mind and your own heart, what's one thing that you're going to do differently to support racial equity or to work towards ending racial injustice? Just give some thought to that, and we'll revisit that in a few minutes. Uh, our next speaker is Reverend Katie, Pastor Katie from the First United Presbyterian Church of Las Vegas! Katie Palmer oversees the Presbyterian Church across from the post office. It's hard to recognize them because they have all this scaffolding as they're doing repairs right now. So you have to go visit them when they're all fixed up. Thank you, Katie, for being here. You're welcome. How are you guys? I apologize for my COVID hair. It's a little out of control. On Sunday, on Sunday mornings, Around 11 o'clock, after the scripture has been read to the congregation, you'll find me in the pulpit talking about God's love for all people around the world. Because I preach in the Christian tradition, you'll often hear me talking about the things Jesus said and did, feeding and clothing people in need, and working for unity, for example. In short, you might say I often talk about why all people matter. Today I'd like to take a few minutes to explain why that message, while true, is not sufficient in light of George Floyd's murder.